After you will be done downloading the Windows Reacts version on your desktop, you simply need to click on the Reacts icon on the desktop, which will launch Reacts. Then enter your email and password and log in to the application. Once the login is done, you will get to the screen that allows you to select the camera you want to use in face-to-face, -face, your microphone and your speakers. So once done, make sure that you save your parameters and you'll then be ready to go in the contact module to uh, connect with the remote Limify user. In order to communicate with the remote counterpart, that person needs to be in your contact list. So either they invite you to connect or you invite them to connect. Uh, so to invite someone to connect, you just go in the contact list, you can type the name of the person, then you will see those people that are already your contacts or those that you would like to invite. So in this case, if I would like to invite IIT test, it's already in the Reacts database, I simply need to click on invite. After having clicked on the invite button, the uh, status of the user here will be pending and as soon as the user accepts your invitation they will turn green like the one shown here and you will simply need to click on the video camera button to start your session with that counterpart. When you receive a new contact request from someone who invites you to uh, be a contact in Reacts, two things will happen. You will receive an email notification that will let you know that a new contact request has been made. And when you will go in the Reacts application, you will see the new contact request on the contacts panel. So you just need to click on it. And on top of the contact panel, you will see this red rectangle with the new contact request. So you click on view, you will see, you will see who's inviting you and you can ignore or accept it. And as soon as you accept it, this person becomes one of your contact and you can start your session. So when you're ready and you can see that your remote contact is online, you just need to click on the video call button and this will be starting the call. So the person on the Philips Lumify device will receive it, only needs to answer on the Lumify device and you will establish the call first in what we call the face-to-face -face mode. So um, on the Windows Reacts program as shown here, you will see the person in the face-to-face -face mode so you can start chatting discussing about what you're going to do the Lumify user may just switch the camera so that they can show you okay here's what we're going to scan or show you the patient monitor or a wound or an EKG or an x-ray whatever they want to share with you uh, and in the face-to-face -face mode you're going to see the webcam nice and big as soon as the Lumify user will hit share ultrasound then on the Windows side, automatically you will go into what we call the session mode. And what you will see in the middle will be the uh, ultrasound video stream. It appears automatically. So um, if you would like to go back to the face-to-face, -face, the Windows user can just hit face-to-face. -face. You'll go back to see the camera of the Lumify device. And on the Lumify device, nothing happens. They keep the same interface. So the Windows user can, you know, go from one to the other without interfering with what the person on the Philips Lumify device sees. So now, uh, if you would like to see also the camera at the same time from the Philips Lumify device, as you can see here, if I move the scene a little bit, I can see both the stream of the Lumify ultrasound and the camera from the tablet um, on which Lumify is running. So if I would like to bring this in the scene, I drag and drop the webcam right in the scene and then with my mouse I can just move this around, I can scroll to make it bigger or smaller, so um, if I would like to put it here in the lower right, uh, left sorry, or right or at the bottom, so I can really adjust the size and even if it looks small here, if I make the scene uh, bigger, I can usually find pretty much the exact area and size that I would like this to be. Uh, so I can then put this right here. So as the person is scanning, so here I'm going to be scanning my ultrasound phantom. So you can both see what's happening on the ultrasound feed and at the same time also what the patient person is doing with the hand. So it really allows you to have both the ultrasound feed and what's happening, uh, you know, you can see the camera feed. So allowing you to guide the user in doing whatever procedure is being done. Okay, so now if I'm 
miniaturizing or making the scene smaller. You can see here that this is the what we would call the uh, default scene. But you could also, you know, put um, the ultrasound stream and the camera in two different scenes. So I can could click here in the upper right, add a scene, drag and drop my ultrasound feed in it. And here, uh, because this is more like a 4-3 uh, type of uh, screen, I could go here and choose 4-3 so it better occupies the screen. And I could then go add another scene. And in this other scene, drag and drop my camera feed. So I could say, you know, I'm going to see in big here my camera. I'm going to see here my ultrasound feed. So I don't have them in the same box. I have them in separate box. But nothing prevents me from even drag and dropping that camera thumbnail again here. So you can really do what you want with the stream and put them wherever you want. If you have different screens in front of you, if you have two screens with your computer, you could put one scene on one side, the other scene on the other side. So you can really do whatever you want. So here, let's focus on that main scene of Reacts, which has the ultrasound stream. So if I would like to change the brightness and contrast on my own without asking the Lumify user to do so, I can do a right click by placing my mouse on the ultrasound stream, choosing brightness and contrast so I could change the brightness and the contrast on my side as I want. And if ever I want to go back to the basic neutral, I just click on reset. Okay. So now um, you can see here, this is the menu bar of the scene. And an important button is the one, uh, the pointer one. So here, this is the uh, pointer, the, this white circle. If I click on it, it becomes blue when it's active. So here, uh, my pointer is red because in my last session, I put it in red. By default, it's usually yellow. So you can click on the little blue arrow. Let's say I would like to put it back to yellow, green. I can choose the size that I want. So when I do this, then the Lumify user, when I activate my pointer on the Lumify screen, can see exactly what I'm doing with the pointer. And the Lumify can also add, sorry, I zoomed here, can also add a pointer, move the pointer around, and the Windows user will be seeing it. So the virtual pointer is something that will be very useful that you will use more than likely pretty often. So here I'm going to deactivate it. Okay. So um, here you can see um, a lot of different options in the assets bar of Reacts. A couple of other options on the action side. Note that when you're doing a session with the Philips Lumify device as your counterpart, most of the you know, options that are present in Reacts will not be uh, active, and the system will tell you. So for example, here if I go in images, and I'm going in my Reacts library, and let's say I'm taking uh, this image here of an airway. So when you're using two standalone reacts, you could drag and drop that picture on the scene. If I'm trying to do this while I'm in a session with a Lumify device, it will tell me that this remote user is using a version of Reacts that does not allow this feature, uh, and the counterpart will not see it. Okay, so um, just so you know, when you're using, when you're doing a session with a Lumify device, lots of things can be done, but lots of others can't. Some of the very cool thing that you can do, and this is excellent uh, for teaching education, is to use uh, the snapshot feature, either video or stills. So in the menu bar here, you will see that there's a little camera here. So when you click on it, it takes a still snapshot. Okay. So as I just clicked on it, you can see here there's a little one that appear in the snapshot gallery. If I click on it, I will see the picture that I just took. Okay. I could then right click, I could rename it, okay, uh, I could add a note to it, and all of this will be saved in Reacts. Now, if I would like to take a video of what my student, my resident, my colleague is doing, I will simply need to click on the little camera icon here. So when I click on this, it asks the authorization to the Lumify user so that you cannot record someone without authorization. So it says waiting for, you know, my remote username to accept scene recording. So on the Lumify devi devi device, <laughs> the person has a pop-up that asks, would you like, you know, to allow Yannick Boulieu to record? And I'm going to say allow. 
So when doing so, you know, you see the menu, the bar here, the scene bar turns red, so you know it's being recorded. And everything you're going to be doing, so if I'm doing some teaching here, if I'm playing with my uh, video feed, and then my student is doing all kinds of different moves, and I'm asking, okay, where would you put your needle in a longitudinal um, view? So maybe I would put it here like this. So everything being done, if the other user uses the pointer, points at things, so all the audio and video of what's being done is recorded. So when I stop it, because I just took a snapshot, this snapshot will go right here in the snapshot gallery. So what you can see here is the snapshot being encrypted and uploaded to your Reacts account so that you can then use it, uh, either view it, show it to someone else, send it through text message. So this is pretty cool when you want to use it uh, for teaching. So this clip here goes straight in the Reacts library. So if I hit the big blue button, it brings me to my Reacts snapshot library where automatically a folder is created when you record something. So if, if I click on that folder, I'm going to see all the images and videos that I took today. If I double click on that video, it opens up right away. And you will be seeing the exact video that we just recorded. I'm just going through it here. So that video is an MP4. And then if you would like to use that video and put it in a PowerPoint presentation, you could go here in your library on that little disk, save locally, so that you can go and put it, let's say I'm going to put it on my desktop, you could change the name, save, and it's done. You can then take it and show it to someone, send it to whoever you want. So when you have an asset in your library, you could also send this by email, even to someone that does not even have a React application. So if I click here, send asset by email, and I type the email address of one or more person, right away they will be receiving the video that you took in Reacts. They just, uh, they will simply need to click on the link they received by email and they'll see that video play right away. The other cool thing that you can do when you just um, saved or recorded uh, an asset, either video or image, is to send it to a colleague by the Reacts Instant Messaging. So here at the bottom of the React platform, you have the message section. So let's say you have one of your user uh, that uh, you would like to have their opinion about, you know, the clip. And so here, none of my users are online, but let, and it, it doesn't matter. So I could click here on Sonia and I could say, okay, look at this clip and tell me what you think, blah, blah, blah. So I send the message. I click on the little uh, attachment icon and I could go get a file either from my computer, but in this case, I'm going to go in my Reacts library where I recorded the snapshot. So I'm going to go in the snapshot gallery, get exactly that clip, remember, that we recorded just before, select and send, and right away, that video that I took is being sent through the encrypted secure messaging of Reacts to the user, the Reacts user that you selected. So that person may be doing something else, they have their iPhone in their pocket, they receive a beep, they open it, they see your clip with your message and then they can text you, oh yeah, that looks good, it looks about you know what it was yesterday. So you can see how you can use all of this all at once to bring all these you know, collaboration to, um, your, um, to your session while you're live with your student or resident or colleague. Another cool thing for training is to use the checklist and or the report function of Reacts. So um, when I click here on the checklist, first there's nothing in my quick pick, so I'm going to go in my library. And this is a feature of Reacts where the person can create a template for a checklist or for a report. So in this case, I previously did a mock ultrasound examination checklist in Reacts. So I just drag and drop my checklist in my quick pick area. And then if I would like to examine my student and I want to make sure I'm going step by step to what I have to through what I have in my checklist. I then take that che that checklist, I put it on the Reacts canvas like this, okay? And here's my checklist. So here it tells me that my remote user will not see the checklist, which is fine, but I can see it as I'm doing the live session. 
So I can ask my resident, you know, first I can put the identification. So here, let's name the person Joe Blow. Um, and then, you know, could, I could put the date. Then if the person has, you know, a student name or which hospital was it at, so you do what you want. And then you can say, okay, I did the vascular examination. The gain was adequate. The adjustment of depth was adequate. And then, oh, you, I can take snapshots. I already did that. So let's move my checklist here. I'm going to go in my snapshot gallery. And the snapshot I took, I'm drag and dropping it right here. I can readjust the size. OK. And let's seal this. And then I can put any comments here at the bottom. So here what I've done is right on the spot during my React session, I filled out a checklist looking at my resident live doing the exam. So I could ask them, do me your best short axis or do me your parasternal long. Look at the left upper quadrant and make sure this is the best you can. And then you take your snapshots. And once you're done creating your checklist or your report, you just save it in Reacts. And you can, so here I'm just going to put two, so save. And that's it. So you can have uh, an e-portfolio of the exams uh, of your residents, colleagues that you can refer to or send to them and build their portfolio. So here, by going through the various features that I've shown you, I've pretty much shown you the types of you know, collaborative sessions that you can do using the Windows version. And there are lots of other cool things like the 3D objects, the videos, the uh, a stream superposition that you cannot use while you're in a session with a Philips Lumify device, but you can if you're doing uh, a Windows to Windows or Windows to iOS React session. An important thing here before I finish that I want to show you is that here uh, I'm presently with a status that is online. So if ever someone calls me, I'm doing a session with my resident and then somebody else sees me online, they call me. What I will see when I'm doing this is a pop-up that says, oh, you know, so-and-so is calling you. And there's a big warning that says, if you take the call, you're going to be stopping or interrupting the call in which you are right now. So if someone calls you and you see that pop-up, just ignore the call. So you'll be able to, you know, uh, smoothly continue your session with the person you're with. If ever you don't want to be bothered, once you're in Reacts, just select the offline status. So if you select the offline status while you're in a React session, nobody will be able to call you. So you'll be, uh, you'll be quiet and nobody will interrupt the session. But if you told someone, hey, whenever you're available, give me a call, you can remain online. And if you see the call coming, you can tell the person to whom you're talking, hey, I have to let you go. Someone else is, come, is calling and you can start the session with the other person. So um, those are uh, the main uh, features that I wanted to show you. And at any time when you're using Reacts in the lower, uh, the lower right corner, you have a button tutorials. So when you're using Reacts standalone, if you want to learn more about how to use it and all the functionalities, you hit that tutorials button and it will just bring you to a series of about 50 tutorials online that will be showing you all the different types of uses uh, application features that can be used while uh, using Reacts. And again, all of those tutorials are for the standalone Reacts, not with what you can do with Lumify. So I hope uh, this was uh, useful to give you uh, some tips and tricks about how to use uh, the Windows version of Reacts, which is very exciting. There's lots that you can do with the Lumify session, very interactive. And then if you're on your iOS or you're on the Mac and you cannot use the Windows version, you have other ways of accessing Reacts and we're going to see them in the next tutorials.